NGO where we support children through school. It's called Children in Freedom. Um, and we run a mentorship program called Mentorship for Freedom. I'm here to tell you our story, how this came about, why we are so passionate about this, and the vision we have for this country. And I'm very excited to hear the presentations before me, because I think we are trying to get to the same goal. We want our children to reach their fullest potential. Otherwise, what's the point of living if you're living a mediocre life? You must find your purpose and your niche. So programs must bring that out from an individual. Okay? Now, good. So that's children in freedom. This is our life. Okay? Before we got here, three years ago, we were living in England. I lived in England for eight years, my husband lived there longer. We met there, we got married. So why did what precipitated us to come back? Now, when I was there, I was working uh, for the University of Cambridge as a researcher. And I'm seeing a, a, a familiar face, I'll ask him later how, whether I have worked with him, I think he knows himself. So, when, when, when I was there, I was commissioned to work in poor schools in Africa. I've grown up middle class, so I don't know poverty beyond the media. So here I am, I'm going to schools, and being Susan, I'm going to the poorest schools. So I ask the government, I ask the district education officers, give me the schools where nobody wants to go. And there were even schools where the district education officers themselves had not paid a bit. They were that marginalized. So through engaging in that, my heart started changing. I think I was ready to, to, to meet girls who don't have sanitary towel. But I was not ready psychologically to meet hungry children. What is that? How can a child not have food? What is that? It is unacceptable. Then I see children sharing pens. In my country, it is unacceptable. So the basic dignity, the basic things, that a child should have were lacking for many children that I visited. So, uh, cut a long story short, it is a project that went on for five years. In that five years, I engaged with about 96 girls from when they were in class five to when they were in class eight. Funding ended, project ended. When they got to class eight, we were able to do a little bit of fundraising and support seven to high school. They are now in Form 4. Now those seven are the beginning of children in freedom. Our hearts could not settle down. After a while in 2013, I got married to Victor and he asked me, what are we doing in England? What are you really doing here? It doesn't make you happy. You reach the glass ceiling. You are here for money. That is it. You have to be honest. Even you in your life, even as I speak, I'm mentoring you, I'm a mentor. As, as you are, wherever you are, why are you there? Ask yourself, be honest. We, were, we reached a point where we were in England for money. I had a very big research manager job. I had been poached by one of the big uh, uh, international NGOs that support girl, girls' uh, education in Africa. And when I came to do quality assurance work, I found that we were supporting some of the girls with just $10 a year. 10. So I don't buy numbers anymore. Because what are numbers? It's the child that you're supposed to be changing, not numbers. Don't come and tell me that you're supporting 100 million, 10 million, 5 million. But are you really changing that child? Otherwise, Africa will be the same as it was yesterday and it will be the same tomorrow. Our children in 10 years, 20 years time will be having this conversation. There will be another Susan standing in front of people to bring about change. We don't want that. So, just our mind and our gear, our conscience, God is working in us. What are you doing here? God, what am I doing? I'm here for money. So what we did is we quit our jobs. There was no other way. We quit our jobs in 2013 and came back to Kenya 
to change lives. Remember, we only had seven children. My husband is not even Kenyan. He just said, okay, at least in Kenya we are doing something. Let us go and build it. So that's when we came, we registered children in freedom. And in the last three years that we've been here, 2014, 2015, this is the beginning of our third year. We have supported six Kenyans. This is your responsibility. Okay? So people are beginning to think different. That they can support um, a, an initiative. I don't have to think that an outsider must come and support it for me. So that is where we are at. However, when we continued engaging with them, because we were with them on the ground, so we are now with them face to face, meeting them, how are you, going to their schools. We were like, oh, what God? That is the best I could get from the internet. I think my husband should take me a picture doing such a thing. <laughs> Pulling my hair out, doing all these things. Because first of all, the children that we had in our hands were timid. You talk to somebody, they, they are almost melting. Just because there's an adult that has talked to them. So they are timid. They lack confidence. Na ile confidence ya dani, not that one of maybe I'm shy. No. It's like I'm not anybody. I don't belong. This is not, the world exists for others. It's not for me. These are the children that we are having. Okay? Then, even to construct a sentence, their thoughts, they want to say something. You can see this poor child wants to talk to you. They want to say something. Even to construct and put it into a sentence, into a language that feeds you back. So, monosyllabic, yes, no, or, or silence. Like, these are the children, this is our future. This is what's going to be. This is our future. So, we were so, we were like, this is not enough to take them to school. It's not enough for them to um, be paid for school fees. We must do something. Some of the things they're learning, um, uh -huh. the feeling of not being good enough, then they were judging themselves according to their circumstances and the background. Because I'm poor, my father has been poor, my grandfather has been poor, guess what? Thank you. And they believe it. It is in their spirit, in their heart. It's in their DNA. Um, <clears throat> then even those who are good at something, because we had some very intelligent children, did not know what to do with that strength. How do I turn my talents and my strength into something that was going to support me is going to change the world, support others. So most of them, their mind was, I translate my energies, my strengths in an examination format. That is where they were. Okay. Then they did, of course, a child who is timid, cannot articulate, cannot think uh, of their talents in, an, in, a, in any form or way, is a child who can never problem solve. Is a child who can never innovate. Is a child who cannot create. So we were supporting children who would never change the world, who would always be mediocre. What is the point? So I remember thinking these children, poverty has sealed their fate. Society, the way culture behaves, has sealed their fate. And then they had very low expectation of their country, of their leaders. This country is doomed. We are always going to be corrupt, you know? Let us, the other countries outside in Europe and in America are better. So they had a mentality of outside. And once you don't value what you have, because they didn't value the country, they don't value their community, they will not do anything about it. They will not struggle, they are all to make a difference. Okay. And when I was reflecting about this, and I was reflecting what you value, what you don't value, you cannot build. I said, aren't we the same? Seated in this, this room. Or you're different from these children. Are we different? To be honest. How, who is wearing a made in Kenya? <laughs> Let us be, now, now let's start thinking. Yeah, who is wearing made in Kenya? So, made in Kenya, the labor. <laughs> Food, is it? Yeah. Uh, good, clap for them. 
And the material, is it made in Kenya? We don't make our cloth. Me, I always wear African habits. I don't even know what to do with my Western wardrobe. It's there in my house. I don't touch it anymore. But this material is from Belgium or Netherlands. It is not helping me or helping my people. I'm like these children. I never think beyond. I've read about Gandhi, how he started a, a, a movement and a revolution where people spinned their own cotton. And if you Google and read about it, that is why Indians still have their authentic. If this was in India, I trust you that this whole place would be filled with traditional clothes. Even if you want it in a suit, but it's authentic. So we have lost authenticity, okay? Even me who is dressed in this, my shoes, maybe even my makeup, as in that a lipstick is from another country. It's the truth. It's the truth. And how am I different from my children? Okay? Look, think about your house, your furniture. Made in Kenya? What percentage? A hundred. Oh, brilliant. Me, if I'm serious, I think I came with my, we, we, we not even think. We came with our furniture, shipped it. It's here. So mine is made in India, I'll be very honest. So I'm not talking like this because I'm perfect. That is what I want you to see. Okay? Which car do you drive? Not what our father did. What day? Who is driving a made in Kenya? I'll give you a million shillings. Made in Kenya? Made in Germany? Japan? France? How are you different? England? There is something about us, there's something about the black person. Muna Shindra could translate your strengths into some innovation and you're not being able to change your continent. What is it? And who is going to do it for you? So this is a this is this is us in one of our mentorship sessions. We not only now started, we not only we went beyond mentoring our own children, which you saw there. We mentor all children, and I'm glad that there's ministry here because all these things we are talking about should not be for some children. That care has projects here. Children in freedom have project here. Um, global give back. It's a call. Have it is for every black child. Let them know who they are. Let them love themselves. Let them start dreaming. Let them be okay. I've learned engineering. It's not a theory. I can now start making things. Mm. We'll have a made in Kenya in 10 years. A car. The other day, um, this university did Taifa laptop. People laughed at you. Oh, I remember my friends. Because you will hold your apple. If you have an apple, even better. Oh, it's the best. My, my husband's computer is Samsung, mine is HP. What does this taifa look like? Does it have a Swahili, something that I can write? Just like when you're in Sweden, you see that the keep, 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 uh, keyboard is different because they make it for their own. Are we together? So, this is the work that we do. And it's so empowering. We will share some videos with you. Um, Skipping. So what do they? What do we tell them? Yes, in a nutshell. Maybe basically, uh, I've shared the spirit of what we tell them. But first of all, they must know who they are. Who are you? I'm Jane. That is nothing. Who are you? You must know who you are. You're not a slave. You're not colonized. You're not supposed to be at the bottom of the pecking order. You're great. For those who read their Bibles, you're a God. You're a child of God. You're a God. Go and read Psalms 82. So these children must know that nothing is beyond them. You are built to do signs and wonders. Then we talk about Ubuntu. This is our philosophy. Anyone know the meaning of Ubuntu? Not victim. <laughs> yes. What's Ubuntu? Brilliant. I am, you have said in plural, I am because of who we are. So if you are not there, I'm not. Do we still think like that? It's an African 
uh, phenomenon. Gender, sexuality, and gender is not about competition. We are here to complement each other. And I think I'm very critical about gender because gender has sort of marginalized the boys. Mm. There is no parallel for our boys. Ama, you're not, you're not mothers to boys or fathers to boys. How do you feel? Thank you. It's the truth. Go and stand in London and say, oh, I want you to support your girl more than you support your boy. They will tell you. What about, I want us to support our girls. It's true, they're behind. In fact, I'm so, I'm such a powerful advocate for girls' education. But on the side, let's do something for our boys. So actually for us as an organization, we're even having to do a lot of damage control for boys. Girls are very articulate. I'll show you a video. It's almost hard to have a really powerful, articulate, speaking boy. I'm a mama boy to myself, Thank you. And I'm a baba boy. I'm leaning on one side. We teach them about the greatness of their country, the greatness of Kenya. We teach them about identity, having purpose in life. And that one is very crucial because I believe we have one, there are many things that we are good at, but there's one thing that you're really good at, even blindfolded and even without a, a, a salary, you will, will love to do it. That's the one thing that you're supposed to be exploiting. <coughs> That's the one thing. Before I started mentoring people, being a social entrepreneur, improving people, I was just a qualitative researcher, writing, publishing, I'm well published. That is it, that's what I used to do, and it was, oh, the only time I laughed was when I go to the villages and talk to people. So I'm a, I'm a people person. That is how God has wired me. There's somebody else who is an engineer, he's a practical, of machines. If they see some, if they see people, they're almost fainting. That's how God has wired you. So exploit what you are good at. So it's very important. Not that it's easy to me pitch one. Like it's very important for the children that we are mentoring to get that one good thing that you are good at and exploit it. Turn it into something for your own good. Then how to think critically, how to innovate and create. These ones come almost naturally when you start knowing who you are. So all these units are interrelated and we teach them entrepreneurship. So it's not about just being good at something. How can that something feed you and feed others? And I think today I'm the first presenter who is not talking about jobs. You should not teach your children to be employed. Teach them to employ. If they get employed, well and good, they are whole. If they choose that path. But you teach them to employ others. That makes them create. So you don't wait for somebody else to create. You don't wait for Susan and Victor to start children in freedom. Then you want a job there. Yo, that is all that you think every day. I want a job at Buckley's Park. I want a, you never think beyond that. Are you seeing how crippling it is? Yes. It is what is taking us behind. That we have a system still put in place. And I don't know if there's anyone from KSB here today. There's a system put in place that is making our children think about employment. But I'm happy that the curriculum is being reformed, not revised. Reformed, so I'm waiting to appear in an interest. Then giving back. You cannot have Ubuntu, you cannot know all these things, you cannot know who you are without giving back. So, this is, uh, Actually, my, my husband's invention he just came to him. Let me tell you, when you're doing what you love to do, you start doing get, getting ideas. That's the future of innovation. So, this is the person who we want to see. Never mind that he looks like a man, just know that he's a human being. And this is somebody with lights in them. This is somebody who has broken out of their shell. Basically, it's somebody with identity, this is someone who knows who they are. So what mentorship is not, and then I'll share you some videos and I'll be done. Mentorship is not seasonal. Mentorship, these children, are they seasonal? Are you a mother today? Then tomorrow, okay, I don't want. Are you seeing? Mentorship
worship is not seasonal, and I'm happy that there's ministry here because you are our mouth. Mentorship should be for every child, every adult, day in, day out. It's not supposed to be even a child-centered approach. It should be a community-centered approach. Everyone should be involved. Okay? Mama boy, ma baba boy, walimuwa boy, pastawa boy. They all come together. So it's not seasonal. Now, what makes it seasonal are things like money. I've been working after my PhD, I was involved in a project. We had a lot of money initially, but at one day, at one point after five years, it finished. That project has finished. So money makes things seasonal. Be very careful. I'm not saying go out and quit your jobs. I'm telling you now, start thinking beyond the project, beyond the money. That is what makes mentorship seasonal. So I am standing here refusing mentorship for my Kenyan children and for my African children to be seasonal. It should not be project and program. I think we once talked to somebody who told us, write, and write us your exit strategy. For once in our life, you are blank. Mm -hmm. Exit strategy about what? This thing is my life. The day I die is when I stop doing it. I have no exit strategy. But because that is how programs are performed, there are some programs that exit strategy works. But when you're talking about mentorship, this is a lifelong thing for our children and for our adults. It should not be externally driven. And if it is, may God give you a partner who listens to you. Because they are there. I've worked with some very good people who ask, Susan, what are we supposed to do here? And you tell them, and they take it. Because they know there is just the money to facilitate. They're like stewards. God is using them to change lives. It should not be career only. This is just one bit. Actually, I've talked, I may, maybe even changing lives as I speak. Nimonga career. Once you sort yourself, your heart and your spirit and your mind, the career will come naturally. Once you sort yourself, once our children know who they are, and that means also knowing these are my strengths. Like me, I think I would have done better in school. I was always a B-minus student because I did not like the confinements in school. But I was good with the arts, and I think I was okay to be, to be just slightly above average in the sciences. I knew, I can't say I knew myself, but there's a child who will be like, Nadia Deni Mom, this is what you do that. This one I struggled, Eo, <laughs> it's just in the curriculum, I'm nothing I can do about it, but that is not my strength. That's a child who knows who they are good at. And then you are able to now point what makes a difference, what, what you can do um, in this child, what this child can do for themselves and for the world. Then it should not be religious. I love God so much, but mentorship should not be religious. Mentorship should not be a church, should not be a mosque, should not be a Hindu, I don't know, temple. Are you getting it? But that's what we make it. It should not be. Because what will the child who is not part of your religion, how are you going to impact them? And yes, they are in the same country with your child. So if you're not careful, religion can split people. Split people on all ways. So let the wisdom and the love God has given you be for everyone. You should not stand in front of children. If you're standing in front of children because you come to encourage them, uh, in, for Christianity, that is fine, it's clear. But if you have come to mentor them, it is very tricky when you make it religious because there's a child who will be other and who will be confused. It should not be tribal, okay? That let us refer to this particular tribe, let us refer to that particular tribe. It should not be among, uh, among numbers. I have held a job where we were so geared about numbers more than quality. <coughs> It should be about quality and changing lives. And then it's not about you. Ubuntu, it is not about you. It is about others. I, God has given me this strength. Can you imagine if I went and said, I am tired of mentoring people, standing in front of people, being critiqued, being looked at. Me, give me a job. Give me a job at ministry. Then I go behind a computer. It has become about me. 
Your gift is not for you. The rain does not keep water to itself. How much does? And the rivers in your villages. The water is for everyone. The sun, very simple. The sun, it keeps its lights to itself. Uh -huh. Only human being. There's, there's this thing I read yesterday. I don't know whether it's fake. There's this girl who was being abused and then was saved by lions. Anyone saw that on Facebook or WhatsApp? You didn't want it. I can try and retrieve it before the end of the day. It's like animals even know how to be kind more than human beings. We are the race that doesn't love, that doesn't care, that is selfish. Okay? People are stealing a billion shillings. What are you going to do with that money? Are you going to eat it? Are you going to become God? Are you going to be an angel? What is it? You even lose sleep. I can't even imagine what it is. it's like to be some people in this day and age. Stole money and it's making your life hell. Grow up. Stop stealing. Simple. And this is what our children are seeing. Look what our children are seeing. Oh, madam, if you are person, if you are why? And then you blame them, bad children. You are going to project X. And yet you are bringing your boyfriends and your girlfriends and your what and what. You are so hypocritical. Okay? So in my, in my view, this is what mentorship should not be. Mentorship should be for all. It should be for all. It should be for all. Period. Mm -hmm.